So this is Jared Walton from Anantec. How's this for a blast from the past? Got a friend. Has the good old Acer P6831FX. That's a uh, Core 2 Duo T5450 running at a whopping 1.67 gigahertz. State of the art circa something like five years ago. Anyway, it served him well for all this time, which, from what I understand, is better than a lot of people have experienced with the Gateway FX series laptops. Not that they're terrible, but, you know, five years for a, a plasticky case with a, pos a potential to overheat, that's pretty good. And uh, he's played a lot of World of Warcraft on it, some other games. Um, anyway, he came to me the other day, said he had a problem. His graphics card has stopped working. So. Here we are, system information, and let me show you the problem here. This is, by the way, a clean install of Windows 7, just to verify that it was actually a uh, hardware problem. So we've got the device manager, and there's your NVIDIA GeForce 8800M GTS. We open up the properties, and it says Windows has stopped this device because it has reported problems code 43. So that generally indicates a hardware error and I'm going to give this a shot. The uh, the general consensus on the internet is that often the soldering um, basically gets worn out in graphics cards after a while. So with a heat gun or a, if you want to be cheap a hair dryer you can hopefully get it to uh, reseal and start working again. So I'm going to give that a shot. So this is the system beforehand, and you'll notice no NVIDIA graphics listed there. Um, I guess the drivers probably aren't installed right now. Actually, they are, but just uh, yeah. So I'm going to pause for a second here. We'll disassemble this, turn it over. I'll show you the heat process the disassembly process a little bit and we'll see if we can get this working I'm going to shift to photo montage now so what we have here is the bottom of the laptop you can see all of the various screws that you need to remove marked in red there's about 16 there there's yet another one underneath the one hard drive bay so make sure to get that but we're not even close to done removing screws Next up we need to remove the media panel above the keyboard that's just pried off carefully, usually from the hinges. And then there's about five screws holding in the keyboard, plus remove those ribbon cables to the media panel. I didn't show the actual keyboard screws, I missed that picture. But once that's out of the way, pretty easy to do, remove the ribbon cable and take care of those three screws. I actually missed that top left screw shown here, so don't miss that one or the system won't come apart. Then moving on, we actually need to remove the LCD on this particular notebook in order to get the chassis apart because underneath the LCD hinge, which we'll see next, are a bunch more of screws. So here's the left LCD screw that holds that in. There's another one that was on the bottom that we removed earlier. Now underneath the hinge, there's I believe six screws. So you have to remove all of those and once they're out of the way, actually before they're even out of the way, you might just want to remove the display completely and pull out the Wi-Fi cable. So let's go ahead and hit that next. Underneath you'll see this has three antenna cables for the wireless. This is the 4965 AGN from Intel, a bit older, but still a good wireless card for its day. And once you've fed those out, you can remove the screen and then underneath this metallic strip of tape you'll have yet another screw we need to get at. You'll also want to remove the speakers in order to get at a couple more screws that um, hold the motherboard in place. Now with all of those things removed and the tape peeled back, that's this next shot. Actually I guess the tape's not peeled back but you can see there's only I think five screws that hold the motherboard in. So remove those and then you'd think you could remove the motherboard. Here's the screw underneath the tape, by the way. 
You'd think you could remove the motherboard, but actually, the way everything's put together, you're going to have to remove the CPU and chipset heatsink. So there's five more screws. Pull that out of the way, and underneath you can see the venerable Core 2 Duo T 5450, and next to it the Intel chipset. And once those are out of the way, the motherboard comes out pretty easily, and here we are, the faulty GTS 8800M graphics chip. So this is what we're going to heat up. Um, you'll actually see I've cleared off the thermal paste here so you can see the various chips. And that concludes the photo montage. Let's hit the video again. So this is actually one of the more difficult laptops to take apart if you're trying to get at the graphics card. You can see all the images I put together in this montage. Over here we have the CPU there's your chipset, and here is the NVIDIA GeForce 8800M GTS. That's the one that we're going to want to heat up and see if that will fix the problem. you got memory and everything else. You'll note that the graphics card is essentially part of the motherboard. The RAM chips for the graphics card are right around the outside, so if the graphics card goes bad on this particular laptop, you're, you're done you're not going to be able to replace it um, unless you want to replace the whole motherboard maybe that could have made sense if you could have gotten it for you know three four hundred dollars back when the laptop was relatively new at this point we're looking at almost a five or six year old laptop so uh, it's it's not even worth repairing if this doesn't work anyway you can kind of see some of the other parts there's a ton of screws there's the rest of the chassis is disassembled. We've got the keyboard, more screws. Over here we have the heat sinks, more screws, my tools, the strip that goes across the top. So yeah, we just have a ton of parts here. And uh, make sure you keep good track of these so that you can put it all back together. Alright, so now I'm going to pull out the hair dryer and we'll heat this up for a couple of minutes. Nothing special about this hair dryer, just my wife's. So hopefully it works well enough and I'm going to move the laptop motherboard so that I don't blow the screws everywhere. So I'm not going to show the whole process of heating the chip up. All that is is a bunch of noise from a hair dryer for a couple of minutes. And then we reverse the previously shown steps and put everything back together. It can actually take quite a bit of time. It took me maybe two to three hours for this whole process, but let's check out the end result and see if perhaps it might have been worthwhile. Here we are. This is the gateway post blow dryer trick. And let me show you here. Right click, you'll see the NVIDIA control panel. is actually now present. Voila! We go over to Device Manager. Likewise. No more Code 43. Now, here's the thing. Yes, it's working at least temporarily but how long will it continue to work that's a more difficult thing to say in the meantime let's at least fire up something to prove that this works give me a second while I get an application ready and here we are we've got the Windows experience index here you can see it scores a 4.6 thanks to the relatively old and slow Core 2 Duo T5450 but more importantly we do have good graphics scores 6.6 .6 on both the gaming and graphics performance and as you can see we're getting 48 frames per second 
definitely running, definitely using the 8800M GTS. So, despite the craziness of the whole process, it did work. How long it will last before there are future problems, I don't know. Maybe it wasn't even the blow dryer. I did remove everything, disassemble it, clean it, put it back together, put on new thermal paste on the CPU and GPU and chipset, so it's possible that one of those things also helped. But there's also that real chance that the graphics chip was failing and the heat from the blow dryer was able to reflow some of the soldering and cause it to start working again. So keep your fingers crossed and let's hope this keeps running for another five years. Well, maybe not five years. It's long past needing upgrading in my book, but my friend still manages to get by. Anyway, thanks for watching. This is Jared Walton from Anantech.